So this is part two, and we have about 15 minutes, so let's see how far we can go. And what I want to do basically is to start discussing the exponential, the gamma. So again, this is where we are. You can see how everything connects while we are doing this. Um, we are in this part using continuous distributions. Uh, the learning objectives are the same. So let's, let's move to the, to the gamma and exponential. As I mentioned earlier in the class, the normal distribution can be used to solve many problems in engineering. However, there's still more uh, numerical <coughs> equations that require different type of density, uh, density functions, density distributions. Okay? So that's why we are extending our discussion. Two such density functions are the gamma and the exponential. And I would say the exponential, from those two, the exponential is the most important. The exponential distribution is a special case of the, of the gamma. And the exponential gamma distributions play an important role in queuing, theory, and reliability. So, especially in reliability problems, we face a lot, as engineers, we face a lot of these problems in any field. You also, you want to be able to plan your design, and you want to make it as reliable as possible. You don't want to design a building and uh, the building crash in two years, or you don't want to design a circuit and then start having problems, or you don't want to design a manufacturing problem and start having a lot of effects, okay? So, exponential will help you predict your um, failures and the reliability of your process. Okay, so let's start with the gamma. The gamma distribution derives its name for a well-known gamma function. Um, so I don't know if you have seen this before. This is uh, the gamma function, basically gamma sine, and this is what it means. It's the integral from zero to infinity for this exponential uh, expression. Um, for the purpose of this course, I'm going to show you six, several continuous distributions, but I'm going to focus the problems and the attention on two of them. Okay, one of them, well, we, we covered the uniform and the normal. I'm going to add two more that are important. The exponential with this derived from the gamma. So we're going to discuss the gamma, but we're going to focus our attention on the exponential. Okay? So this is the gamma function, and we can also estimate this value of gamma, or this integral, for integer values. So if you have a positive integer, this value of gamma m can be estimated using the factorial of m minus, m minus 1. The thing is, sometimes you don't get an integer value, so that's where that's, those are the cases in which you have to use the integer. But if you have an integer, integer number, you can use n minus 1 to estimate the value, n minus 1 factorial to estimate the value of this gamma function. What is the parameter n minus 1? n minus 1, n is the number of observations you would have to write. So what, we're going to, what I'm trying to say is, in order to get the value of the gamma function, you need to integrate the expression. But you can estimate that expression, this one, if your value for alpha is a integer. So if it's an integer, you don't have to deal with the integral. You can just use x minus 1 factorial. It will give you the, the value of the gamma function. Okay, and a special case for a fraction one half, that would give you the square root of p. And we know p is about uh, 3.14, right? So those are special cases that would simplify your solution for the gamma function. Okay? Now, we know how to find the gamma, the value of gamma. We know that the value of the gamma function is that integration. Or for the special case in which you have integers, you can find it by a minus 1 factorial. So we can now discuss the actual density function for the gamma. So this is the actual 
gamma distribution or probability density function. As you can see, you have that gamma function in this part of the expression. So if you have an alpha value that is not integer, you have to find that integrator first and then plug in the expression of the density function. That's very complicated. So that's for the purpose of this class. I'm not going to ask you to solve problems for the gamma, but I want you to be able to identify it. Okay, so this is the gamma density function, and this is this gamma function. You can find it using this integral or for the special case of integrals. Okay? And again, why is the gamma important? It can take many shapes. And you saw why the shapes are important. Because your data, your histograms will have different shapes. And you want to be able to pick one of the distributions to the shape of your histogram. So good, a good property of the gamma is that it can take different shapes depending on the value of your parameters, alpha and beta. Okay? So for the gamma distribution, we can also find the, the mean and the variance. And those are given by the mean is alpha times beta. And this variance is alpha times beta squared. Okay? So that's the gamma. Now, special case of the gamma is the exponential. And this one is very important again. So the special gamma distribution, the special gamma distribution for which alpha equals one is called the exponential distribution. Okay? And we're gonna use the exponential a lot. So the continuous random variable x has an exponential distribution with parameter beta if its PDF or density function is given by this expression. So you have an exponential expression in which you have only one parameter, beta, and that, that beta is the mean for the exponential distribution. Okay? So this is, this, is, this is an expression that you can easily integrate and find the probability because it's just the integral of the exponential. Okay? We can also find the variance and the mean. So for the exponential, the mean is given by beta, so that's the only parameter for the exponential, and the variance is given by beta squared. Okay? So, again, let's look to one example. So, the exponential distribution, again, is, is used a lot for um, reliability. You want to know what, when the next failure of your machine will happen, and you want to plan for it. So in this example, where you see, suppose that you have a system con that contains a certain type of components, whose time in years the failure is given by t. t is your random variable. The random variable t is modeled uh, model nicely by the exponential distribution with the mean of beta, phi. And if five of these components are installed in different systems, what is the probability that at least two are still functioning at the end of eight years? Okay, so let's take this by parts. So the first part is asking, um, five of these components, no. Uh, Well, the, the only question we have is what is the probability that at least two are still functioning at the end of eight years? But we, we're going to still define the, the exponential distribution. So first, let's Okay, so the function or the density function for the exponential is the following. is 1 over beta e to the minus x beta. And this is for x greater than 0, and then 0 elsewhere. So for this problem, we know the, the, the value for the mean, which is 5. So beta equals 5. 
and this is in years, so this is basically telling you that the average failure will happen every five years. So you can solve the first question, which is basically what is the probability? <coughs> Let me read this again. So the probability that the first failure happened after eight years. Okay, so in order to answer what is the probability that at least two are still functioning at the end of eight years, we need first we need to find what is the probability of failing after eight years. Okay? <laughs> so that we can do using the exponential. So the probability that these components failure will be after eight years. The random variable t is the time. So we want to find out that the failure occurs after eight years. So what will be the values of the integral? A2. We want to know, so let's say this is time, and we want to plan, we want to know what is the probability that the component will still working after eight years. So let's say this point here is eight years, right? So if you want to find what is the probability that they are going to be working after eight years, then that first <coughs> failure should occur after eight years. So we want to find out when that's going to happen. And we're going to use the exponential. OK. So we know the, the mean of the exponential. We substitute that E into the function, and now we can find that probability. So for this case, if you solve this integral, And this will be equal to minus exponential minus t over 5 evaluated for these limits. And if you solve this, this will be equal to 0 0.2. So that's the probability that one component will fail after eight years. But the question is, of these components, are inside, what is the probability that at least two are still functioning at the end of eight years? So we have five components, and we want to know what is the probability that at least two are working after eight years. So. Remember from our discrete distributions, when we look at either success or failure, working or off working. So now we are looking at that type of problem. We know the probability. This probability is fixed. This is the probability of failure after eight years. And now we want to know if we what will be the probability of having two success. Okay? So for that cases, for those cases, we use the binomial. So, we can let x represent the number of components. Functioning after eight years. And using the binomial, we 
we can find the probability of x being greater or equal to 2. And that will be equal to 1 minus the summation from x equals 0 to 1 of the binomial with x n equals 5 and probability of 0 0.2. And if you solve this using the, the table for the binomial, which will be provided as well in the exam, this is 0 0.2627. Okay, so for the purpose of the exam, we're going to just, we're going to stop on the normal. The exponential is not going to be covered in the exam, okay? So study up to the material for the normal. This is material that is going to, not the binomial, the binomial is part of the exam. But the exponential is going to be part of the next exam. Okay? I'm going to be in my office. Do you have questions? Uh, stop by and I'll see you next week.